Well, hi everybody. My name is Rainer and this is my channel Rainier Books. The year is about to end. Christmas is approaching fast. Tomorrow it's the holy evening, Christmas Eve. And in one week uh, ahead of us is a new year 2024 lying. So time to look back at 2023. And I thought we'd do this today by reminding you, reminding us of all the awards that have been handed out. Not all the awards, literary awards. There are so, so many. But I have a list of 22 books for you to remind you of who and what books did win the great awards of 2023 in the English-speaking world, in English translation or in... Um, written originally in English. So let's start this. And um, I wanted to do this chronologically. And starting in April 4 of 2023, that was the day when the Penn Faulkner Award was given, was announced in the United States. The Penn Faulkner Award uh, goes to the author of the best work of fiction by a living American citizen. It was first awarded actually in 1981. And former winners have been the likes of E.L. Doctorow, Don DeLillo, Don DeLillo, Philip Roth, Richard Ford, Ann Patchett, John Updike, and Imbolo Mbwe. So this year, the award went to The Book of Goose by Yi Yun Li. The Book of Goose is a haunting story of friendship, art, exploitation, and memory by the celebrated author Yi Yun Li. About two women, Fabienne, who is dead, and Agnes, who receives the news about Fabienne's death in the United States. And this book is a reflection, a remembrance of a friendship, of long friendship, of growing up in France. And it is the winner of the Penn Faulkner Award. The um, Penn Robert W. Bingham Award has been handed out since 2002, and this goes for the best short story collection. And this year it was taken by by Morgan Talt, The Night of the Living Res by Morgan Talty. The jury said about this, Morgan Talty's Night of the Living Res percolates with tales about contemporary life and community on the Penobscot Indian Nation Reservation. Here, Talty is a master of the craft. He understands the narrative power of the short story form, its ability to serve as both a mirror and a compass. These linked stories probe generational trauma and tradition with honesty, unrelenting humor and depth through memorable characters who ask, how did we get here? And how do we get out of here? Talty's stories are made of fire and walk among us. May they walk for years to come and make their home deep in our canon. Yeah, I read the book. I read Night of the Living Rest. It was uh, really a very um, compelling read. I loved some of the stories very much. Some of the stories didn't resound so much with me, but it's great storytelling nevertheless. April 21, that was the day when the Los Angeles Times Book Prize was announced. And this year it went to a translated work of fiction, to Solenoid by the Romanian author Mircea Cartarescu, translated from the Romanian by Sean Coller. By Sean Cotter. Based on Cartarescu's own role as a high school teacher, Solenoid begins with the mundane details of a diarist's life and quickly spirals into a philosophical account of life, history, philosophy, and mathematics. One character asks another when you rush into the burning building, will you save the newborn or the artwork? On a broad scale, the novel's investigations of other universes, dimensions, and timelines reconcile the realms of life and art, and this is mostly set in Romania of the 1970s and 1980s. It has 639 pages in the translation. The original Romanian book has more than 800 pages, so reckon with a densely printed novel. I haven't read Solenoid yet. And I'm not sure if this is really my kind of work with so much philosophy and uh, reflection in it. Maybe it's something for you, though. April 27 was also the month, the day when The Edgar, the best crime novel in the United States, or uh, an American award was uh, announced. And this year it went to a novel that I read and actually liked a lot, Notes on an Execution by Dania Kukavka. Uh, it has this central character that is not at the focus of the narrative. It's Ansel Packer, who's a serial killer. And 
This book, he has killed several girls and women, and this book focuses more, it narrates from the point, from the viewpoint of women who have been victims or relatives to victims or um, the police officers who investigated the case. And this book is much about the um, fascination. It's also, but you could say it's also about the fascination that some of us have that we all have from time to time when we watch uh, thrillers about serial killers and that those th serial killers are probably not so fascinating and and genius at all it's a great book with a very different angle of narrating a story like that april 27 was also the day when the stella prize was announced the stella prize is sort of a australian sister of the international of the women's prize that is uh, announced in england this is only for Australian women, Australian writing women. And this year it went to The Jaguar by Sarah Holland Bett, 144 pages short book. With electrifying boldness, Sarah Holland Bett confronts what it means to be mortal in an astonishing and deeply humane portrait of a father's Parkinson's disease and a daughter forged by grief. Opening and closing with starting elegies set in the charged moments before and after a death and fearlessly probing the body's animal endurance, appetites and metamorphosis, the Jaguar is marked by Holland Bat's lyric intensity and linguistic mastery along with a stark new clarity of voice. I don't know if I want to read this, but maybe it is a something for you. Um, and it's a winner of the Stella Prize in 2023. May 8, you remember that day very well because the Pulitzer was uh, announced. The Pulitzer Prize, you know, they never have shortlists. After awards, they say who the finalists were, but they always only um, tell us about the winners on the day it is awarded. And this year, it went to two novels to, in fiction, To Trust by Hernan Diaz and To Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver. I don't have to say so much about these books, I think, because they were talked about so much this year. I have started Trust. I didn't really like it that much. And I also have read uh, Demon Copperhead, which was one of my favorite reads of 2023, a book that might be returned when I come to my top 10 reads of this year. May 15 is the day when the British Book Award, or the Nibbies, are handed out. And this year, the fiction British Book, British Book Award went to an American author. It went to Babel by R.F. Quang. And this novel, which is a fantasy, historical fantasy novel, this novel has won so many awards that it, was, it has won the Nebula Award for Best Novel, the Locus Award for Fantasy Novel this year. It was nominated for the World Fantasy Award. It won the Alex Award, the Goodreads Choice Award nominee. It was for Fantasy Last Year, novel nominee for Best Novel, Adult, and so on and so forth and so on. Great success. Tell me if you if you read Babel. I only read Yellow Face by R.F. Quang this year. The prize for the Best Debut Novel in the British Brick Award went to Ireland. It went to Trespasses by Lewis Kennedy a book that I have read that I didn't like so much. I know many of you liked it a lot, a lot, a lot, but it was not so convincing to me, the story of the um, young woman having an affair with a much older man during the times of the Troubles in Ireland, in Northern Ireland. The International Booker Prize went uh, on the 23rd of May over the counter, and it went for the first, very first time to Bulgaria and to the author Georgi Gospodinov, uh, and his novel Time Shelter, translated from the Bulgarian by Angela Rodel. And I'm very happy that I saw last night that actually Georgi Gospodinov is coming to Stockholm in April next year to present the Swedish translation of Time Shelter. So this is a book about uh, the collective remembrance of times that lie behind us and people believing that the times that lie behind us are better and that we should go back to the times, make our countries Great again, you know what I mean. The uh, next award that comes chronologically in the English language in um, 
2023, let me look at my notes here, is on May 25 this year. The Dublin Literary Award, one of the most fascinating awards, I think, because it's different from many other awards. This award is actually based on the nominations from libraries from all over the world. And it is for books that are written in English or translated into English. And this year, the prize went, the award went to a novel that comes from Germany, Marzahn Mon Amour by Katja Oskam, translated from the German by Jo Heinrich. This is a great story of several stories, actually a novel consisting of several short stories, if you want. It is uh, the memories or the, the um, narratives of a pedicurist in Marzahn, which is a more um, precarious and poorer part of Berlin, Germany. The Women's Prize for Fiction is one of the big events of the year. Some of you read the long list, some of you um, read every book and review every book that's on the long list. Well, I read the winner, actually, and um, the winner of this year was Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver, who also won the Pulitzer. And Barbara Kingsolver um, has written a marvelous and unforgettable story about um, David Copperfield in our times, Demon Copperhead, who lives in the Appalachian Mountains of West Virginia and whose life is very, very difficult and very harsh and poor from the beginning, but who survives because the first sentence goes, the day I got myself born. Well, something like that. It's, it's not very 100% correct. The Orwell Prize for Political Writing. As you know, I'm very interested in political things. Everything in our lives is political, more or less, because we depend on political decisions of geopolitical developments, as we can see. And the Orwell Prize for Political Writing, of course, the namesake is George Orwell. It went this year to The New Life for Fiction by Tom Crew. The New Life by Tom Crew, which is an autobiographical, no, which is a biographical story of uh, a queer man. And the nonfiction prize, I read the nonfiction winner, actually. I reviewed it also, I think, in a single review on this channel. The winner was Show Me the Bodies, How We Let Gren Greenfell Happen by Peter Apps, which is a book about the Grenfell Tower fire that killed 72 people in London, in North Kensington, uh, six years ago, in a horrible, scandalous fire that would never have to be happened if the people would have... Uh, if, if those who made decisions would have regarded security as an important matter and the life of poor people as an important matter. July 6. Some of you have celebrated Independence Day two days before or Canadian Canada Day five days before. On July 6, the CWA, the Crime Writers Association Gold Dagger, was announced in the UK and it went to an American author. It went to George Dawes Green for his novel The Kingdoms of Savannah. And I read from the jury motivation here. After a 14-year hiatus, George Dawes Green's triumphant return with the Kingdoms of Savannah is a bravura demonstration of the extraordinary power of crime fiction. Peopled with vividly drawn characters from every southern walk of life, this compelling mystery achieves something remarkable in peeling back the skin of Georgia's troubled history to expose a society whose opulence was always built on something very dark. Well, that was on July 6th. Three weeks later, the Miles Franklin Award went over the counter. And this award is the Australian Award for Best Fiction. And this year, it went to a woman. It went to Chai Time at Cinnamon Gardens by Shankari Chandran. This is about a nursing home, the Cinnamon Gardens Nursing Home. It's nestled in the quiet suburb of West Grove, outside Sydney, Australia, populated with residents with colorful histories, each with their own secrets, triumphs and failings. This is their safe place, an oasis of familiar delights, a beautiful garden, a busy kitchen and a beautiful recreation schedule. But this ordinary neighborhood is not without its prejudices. The serenity of Cinnamon Gardens is threatened by malignant forces more interested in what makes this refuge different rather than embracing the calm companionship that makes this place home to so, so many. As those who challenge the residents' existence make their stand against the nursing home with devastating consequences, our characters are forced to reckon with a country divided. A country divided, that's something that sounds so familiar to all of our countries, doesn't it? This is the winner of the Miles Franklin the Miles Franklin Award in 2023, Cinnamon Gardens, uh, the residents of Cinnamon Gardens. 
Number 16, the 16th book, the 16th awarded book, is coming pretty much later than July 25, because then we have November, yes? Award November. We could actually have booktube challenges or booktube groups calling called Award November, because there's so many awards handed out in November. On November 8, the general, the Governor General's Literary Award, Canadians know what I'm talking about. It's a Canadian award comparable to the National Book Award in the United States. The Governor General's hands out seven awards in fiction, poetry, nonfiction, YA, text, YA illustrated, and translated fiction. And the fiction winner of 2023, that was Chrysalis by Anua Varghese. It's a gender, it's a short story collection, a genre blending stories of transformation and belonging that center women of color and explore queerness, family and community. A couple in a crumbling marriage faces divine intervention. A woman dies in her dreams again and again until she finds salvation in an unexpected source. The stories um, in the debut collection are by Terence Poignant and Chilling, blurring the lines between the real world and worlds beyond. Well, sounds interesting. The Scotia Giller Prize, which is the kind of maybe more famous Canadian award, was handed out five days later on November 13. And this year it went to Sarah Bernstein and her book or shortlisted novel, Study for Obedience. With a sharp lyrical voice, Sarah Bernstein powerfully explores questions of complicity and power, displacement and inheritance. Study for dis study for obedience please not disobedience study for obedience is a finely tuned unsettling novel that confirms bernstein as one of the most exciting voices of her generation wow number 18 on november 16 was the national book award and um the fiction award went to justin torres for blackouts which is a work of fiction that sears through the inventions of history and narrative an extraordinary work of creative imagination insists that we look long and steady at the world we have inherited and the world we have made. A world full of ghostly shadows and flashing moments of truth. Also very queer book. Um, the translated fiction award in the National Book Award went to the Brazilian novel The Words That Remain by Stenio Gardel, translated from the Portuguese Brazil by Bruno Dantas Lobato. Sorry, Mr. Bruno. A sweeping novel of repression, violence, and shame along with their flip side survival endurance and the ultimate triumph of an unforgettable figure on society's margins. This is also a queer novel. National Book Award for Nonfiction. Very important. I think I want to read this very much. I hope that my library buys it. If they don't do it, I might have to buy it myself. This is The Rediscovery of America, Native Peoples, and the Unmaking of U.S. History by Ned Blackhawk. Ned Blackhawk interweaves the five centuries of native and non-native histories from Spanish colonial exploration to the rise of Native American self-determination in the late 20th century. And they say that it's a groundbreaking work of history writing for the United States, which hasn't happened before. Number 21 is a book that I ordered last night because it sounds so, so interesting. This is called Fireweather, a true story from a hutter world by John Valand. John Valand is an American-Canadian journalist and a compelling writer, as they say. He has written many awarded books already. This is about fire, Fort McMurray fire, that just almost destroyed the complete town of Fort McMurray in northern Alberta in Canada some years ago. And it also is about the fires that we will experience more and more and more in the future if we don't stop climate change. And the last book, last but not least, is Prophet Song by Paul Lynch, which is uh, a dystopia about an island which is no longer a democracy. Prophet Song is a work of breathtaking originality, offering a devastating vision of a country at war and a deeply human portrait of a mother's fight to hold her family together. And these were the 13, the 22 books, the 22 awarded books that I picked. Have I forgotten any awards? Please tell me in the comments down below. If you like this video, slap it a like and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. And I hope to see you very soon this year on this side of the year in another video on this amazing channel. Thank you and happy Christmas to all of you who celebrate. Bye-bye.